Tsunami Studios. The Union issue number two, Marvel's most complicated tie-in book to date, originally for Empire, now for King and Black, and you can really tell what parts were Empire, and then you really know which parts are King and Black. I really enjoyed the first issue. The characters were unique, the art style was great, the writing was fun, Union Jack's an asshole, nobody likes him, we're not going to make him likable. The second issue is okay. It didn't have that oomph that the first issue did, mainly because Britannia wasn't in it that much. They killed her in the last issue. I don't think she's staying dead. You don't make a character design like that. Build her up to be the queen, the fucking best character in all of fucking Britain, and then have her be dead. You just don't. She's gonna come back at some point. I'm feeling that, and if it's not, what a wasted opportunity to not make a Marvel Legends action figure of her because she's just that cool of a design. This issue had a lot of ups and downs, so let's get into it. We'll talk about all the stuff that happened. We open up this issue in Wales in the past, and we see the idea of the choir when she started off as a villain. She's evading the police, and a mysterious figure in the background comes to her and says, Hey, I can help you out. Why don't we work together? And you see that it's Britannia, because Britannia's the best. And she's like, hey, I can help you, help you out in your situation here. Cut to the present day, we see Britannia's dead body lying in the ground. And there's like a newscast about like the stuff we already knew, like Britain's putting a team together from all across the like UK. Everything's going to be great. And reports start to come in that Britannia's dead and like nobody really knows what to do. Then we see that the, uh, the characters that were obviously going to be Skrulls are now null creatures start to morph their way into the world and they're like surrounding the rest of the team and everyone's like all right we got to find a way out of here but we can't kill these people because they are technically people so let's find a way to neutralize them kelpie's doing a pretty good job of holding her own she's the scottish one i thought she was irish i feel really stupid for not knowing locations i kind of like that union jack is still unliked by everyone he's just like some random guy that is just a stupid spy person i think that's cool Snakes is the one from Ireland, and he's like really strong and creepy. We still don't really know anything about him. I bet we'll find out more in the next issue. And Choir is the Wales one, or the Welsh one, I should say. And she is just like, she's freaking out this idea because she doesn't want to like hurt anybody. She's kind of like scared of like these symbiote creatures coming after her. And they do pile up on her and like attack her, but she screams really loudly. So we see kind of her power is her voice. But as she does that, she is affected with the powers and she gets a really cool symbiote looking suit. Like it looks really good with like the scarf around her face and like the green spot of hair coming off it. That looks freaking insane. I love the way that looks. The artwork is so great in this book, but the character designs are unparalleled to anything in modern stories. Like each design for these characters, they look really planned and thought out. I absolutely adore that. It is such a cool thing to see. So we fade to black pretty much and we see that Union Jack was knocked out by the choir as a symbiote and he wakes up, the, the world's engulfed in like darkness and he's like, huh, how long was I out? Oh, just about 20 minutes, okay. So you see like, how come, we, we okay, so we get a couple more things before we get there. We get a little information, it's, it's King in Black. Null's on the earth, he's attacking everything, the world's falling down. Everything bad is happening. Union Jack starts to wonder why the symbiotes didn't come after him. Like, why did they, like, if he was unconscious, why didn't anybody try to attack him? And I like it that, like, the snakes is just like, oh, it's probably because you're useless. And he gets a little pissed off about that. But, like, yeah, he is useless. So they see, we got to find a way to at least stop Choir because she is powerful and can do some severe damage. Now, something we don't see in this shot, too is the deceased body of Britannia. So that's not there anymore. So I'm assuming the symbiotes have taken it somewhere and that might be how we bring her back. But we have to get to the mainland to find the choir and, and stop her from destroying this, you know, just like the city. So Kelpie makes a wave that everybody rides on and they're like going through the city trying to find the area and they do spot her eventually. And it's kind of like Union Jack who's like, okay, we have to put a plan together. Even if it's a bad one, I guess I'm kind of leading this. So he has Britannia's sword with him. He's ready to fight. We see like in the middle of like just like a f carnival area. The choir is just like surrounding this like this mother and her child with a bunch of symbiotes. And it's like, you want to fight me? Come at me. And everyone starts fighting and it's looking pretty cool. But they need like a distraction to kind of like wipe people out so they can get their plan in order. So Kelpie's like, oh, I got an idea. Here's what we'll do. She just like brings a fucking tidal wave over the entire area of the city, wiping out a bunch of the symbiotes so they can't stand. And Union Jack's like, 
what the hell are you doing? That was a lot. So maybe don't do that next time. But you see that the choir symbiote has taken the child, and the child's freaking out. I like that the child, he's got like a little Fantastic Four logo on their shirt. That's pretty fun. I kind of thought that was a cool detail. But the plan has to come together, and they're kind of working it out. But what you see is Union Jack drops the sword because he's not going to do that. He's kind of like trying to talk to the choir underneath the symbiote. Like, I know your name is Ruth. You're not a bad person. You might have done bad things, but it doesn't make you a bad person. And off to the side, we see that Darwin and one of like the senator people, whose name is Selwyn James, are kind of like configuring like a, just like a random electric electric booth, doing some weird shit over there. Like, okay, what are you up to there, Darwin? It's like, well, I'm, I'm doing the right thing here. So you see he's like tying some cords to the end of the sword. You're like, okay, that's an interesting plan here. And then I like it too because Union Jack, he's a useless son of a bitch, but he's trying to get through to choir. Like, think about Britannia. Like, is this what she'd want from you? Is this what you'd expect her to do? Like, what you'd want from her? And like, of course not, but you're like, Null is all powerful, and who needs Britannia when you have Null? And then all of a sudden, Darwin throws the sword, and he hits on the power. Unijack catches it, stabs into the ground, and all the water is electrocuted, the buildings are on fire, and the symbiote starts to burn. And we see that the choir comes back to her normal state. And you're like, that's fun. I mean, that would have worked probably too for, you know, like a scrawl or something. So, makes sense to me. I'm okay with it. I think it's kind of fun. Then we cut back to the, like a newscast where it's like we 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 mourn the loss of a great hero Britannia. I'm like, see, everybody in everyone in the UK loves Britannia. They can't have killed her just so blatantly in the first issue. She's gonna come back, and if she doesn't, I'll be very disappointed and upset in this book. I really will. So we see it's it's nighttime again. The world's still on the fritz, but the team is walking over to Union Jack, and they're like, yeah. So we're gonna be done now. You you think we were doing this? because we we want to support like the uk or because we're a team we were doing this for britannia like we don't give a shit about queen and country we we, we believed her message we believe what she wanted to do now that she's dead how are we supposed to do this like we can't even keep ourselves together so we're done we're not a team anymore goodbye union jack and then selwyn walks up to Union jack it's like hey um your team just walked out so i don't know what the hell you're gonna do about that but you have a lot more problems than that sir but someone's like oh no it's not my problem you know you signed a contract with your country there jackie boy so if you if you read the fine detail you'd know that if britannia died you would become leader of the team until further notice until a better replacement came in so you better have your team ready for a full public presentation at the end of the month or you're gonna go to jail so go get your team in together union jack you run this operation now I mean, it is called Union, so it makes sense that Union Jack would be there. And it just kind of end like he's pissed off, but there's still like this idea that everyone loves Britannia. We got to bring Britannia back. I love Britannia. She's my favorite character in this book, and she's dead. I like them all, though. I think they're all pretty cool. I just think it needed her. They did a lot in this book. They set up the backstory to choir. They did a lot of Kelpie. You know, Union Jack went through so many emotions. They're talking about the importance of, you know, Britannia in the world, given the like, little history about her. The team disbanded, all under the vice of a king in black tie-in. That's a lot to do, but somehow it balances itself all right. This issue lagged a little bit more than I think the first issue did, but I'm still excited to see the next one. I'm curious to see how this book is going to play out. It's fine. I don't think it's a bad book. I just don't think it's going to be as impactful as I wish it was because these characters have cool designs and cool ideas. I just hope it pulls itself out of its own ass and maybe becomes something better. I think it would be better if it wasn't a King and Black tie-in, but that's neither here nor there. Books happen to exist because of tie-ins. I can't complain about that. So the Union issue number two, I am going to give a 7 out of 10. Now thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. For King and Country. For king and country? No, for queen and country. You guys know what I mean. UK peeps, what's up?